It's Emil. It's Emil Guillermo. A little contemplative today on on show 160 on Emil Amux Takeout. W D A A A T. What does an Asian American think? Well, I'll tell you. General Colin Powell is dead. He died today. I mean, when you wake up and that's the news, it's almost like you got to you got to like recover from the initial shock because you're rocked. You're rocked when you hear that news. You are rocked. Like what? And he dies on the day that we recognize as the day that the Filipinos beat the Pilgrims. That's a big deal. October 18th is when we got the news. I'm not sure if he died like on the 17th and the announcement on the 18th. We get the news that General Powell is dead from complications of COVID. He had cancer. But he was 84, and he was susceptible to all the different things about COVID because he was in that that class of people. Oh yeah, sure, he was a good guy, but he was a, you know, he was compromised because of cancer, my my loma. But he, we get the word on today's date, October 18th, the day the Filipinos beat the Pilgrims. Don't forget that October 18th, 1587. You got to remember that. Just like people think, oh, Columbus, 1492. You know, 1587 Filipinos. All right. Now, this is where the, the key thing is. Did they discover America? No, they stepped foot on America. That counts for something. October 18th, 1587. I'll talk about that in a bit. But first, here on uh, this program, you know, I, I like to talk about uh, on Emil Amuck's takeout, show one, show 160, we, f- we fill the void. You know, no one's going to bother to ask you, well, what does an Asian American think? W-D-A-A-A-T. You know, that, that was, are they, are they going to do man on the streets? The infamous man on the street interviews and say, well, what do you think about Colin Powell? No, th- they're probably not. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they think. I'll I'll tell you how an Asian American should feel. Because like I said, this is like a gut punch. A gut punch to to all of us who saw him as the model, as the example. Here was a, a black man born not to, you know, not not to elite circumstances, his parents were immigrants from from Jamaica. He grew up in the Bronx. He went to City College in New York. He was not a great student, but he excelled in ROTC. Now, who does that sound like? I know you know a bunch of people who say, "Hey, that sounds like my cousin. That sounds like that sounds like me." That's a, he he excelled in ROTC. So we're going to talk about Colin Powell what he means to all of us. This, this is this is a moment where it makes a difference if you're a so-called BIPOC, a black, indigenous, a person of color. Because that that's what Colin Powell stood for. He stood for the BIPOC possibility, right? I mean... He was beyond BIPOC. He was beyond politics. He was beyond race. He just said, I can do it. You can do it. And he did it. So we're going to talk about Colin Powell a little bit today. And then switch over and talk about this great day, October 18th, 1587. More than 400 years the Filipinos step foot on American soil. Yeah. Before the pilgrims got here, we beat the pilgrims. If this were a foot race, I mean, 
the pilgrims would be eating our lumpia. They, they came in 1620, Plymouth Rock. The Filipinos were here in 1587. Do the math. We were first. You can win some bar bets there. I'll bet you a San Miguel. Forget the San Miguel. Go up, up, upper shelf. I'll bet you a one of those uh, fancy Filipino rums. Win that bar bet. Filipinos were first. Anyway, we're here at 2 p.m. Pacific Live, and we're just going to spill over into from our lanyap, our little something extra, into the show because it's important. It's important to talk about Powell and his life and to, to think about how he's an example for all of us. To When you think the politics is divisive, he transcended politics, for goodness sakes. And he was a figure that we could accept if you were considered liberal or progressive. You could trust him that he was doing the right thing, at least for the moment. Of course, there was that one major, what he called a blot in his history that we'll get into. But Colin Powell, the general, he was a special guy. And that's what we're going to talk about today, primarily. So be here, bang the gong. Now, Facebook at emilgalermo.media. We're also, you can catch the replay on amok.com. Thank you for being here. Uh, you know, when you, you begin, I, I just remember waking up around the six o'clock hour and I, I got the bulletin that Colin Powell had. I, I just couldn't believe it. Former U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell, first. No black Secretary of State's. Before that, first African-American Secretary of State serving under President George Bush, George W. Bush, 2001 to 2005, special. Now, look, I'm a modest first. I was first local TV reporter and network affiliate in San Francisco, Filipino, not Asian, Filipino. First Asian-American, though and first Filipino to host a national news show at NPR. First Asian American male to host a national news show. First was Connie Chung of any gender when she hosted uh, the CBS Evening News. But when you're a first in your field, the first in, in the thing that you do, that's a big deal. But look at Colin Powell. He was first in the military, first in, you know, com, com, you know, the he uh, was the commander of the U.S. Army Forces Command. I mean, he broke through what you would call the the most restrictive kind of. I know what would you call it the the most restrictive environment. He broke through. There were no glass ceilings for Colin Powell. He just busted through the military. Then he was trusted there. Then it was politics. And mind you, I'm talking about a Reaganite. I'm talking about a conservative African-American. And yet, we have these feelings for him that are so different from, say, another African-American conservative you can list them off in your head. You know who they are. They were a cut below Colin Powell. And why was it? Because they were too dogmatic, too doctrinaire, too... You couldn't trust them? Not in the same way you could Powell. I mean, you know who I'm talking about. The the African Americans whose bylines you read in the Wall Street Journal, on the op ed page. The African American who served in the Supreme Court continues to serve. 
There are more than just a handful of those type of African-American conservatives, and yet, why is it that there's a special place for Colin Powell and not for those other names? And maybe it's just because Colin Powell just, he just strikes you as being above all the politics, above all the lies that you hear from all the dividing lines. Because when you are the commander of the U.S. Army Army Forces Command, I guess we just have that, we give that person a, a respect. That those people aren't going to lie to us, right? Well, okay. Here's the other thing about Colin Powell. He wasn't perfect. He was human. And guess what? When he screwed up, he owned it. He, he owned it. He absolutely owned it. And he might as well get into it now. I mean, it was 2003. He, he sells the U.N., Security Council on the idea that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Saying that, yeah, they've got the, they've got the goods. No doubt there can, quote, there can be no doubt that Saddam Hussein has biological weapons and the capability to rapidly produce more, many more. February 5th, 2003. He said that before the UN Security Council. And it was just false. It wasn't true. He said, we have the intelligence. Okay, so he... There was a, a little bit of tarnish there. A lot. But look how he handled it. He did not back down. He did not point fingers at other people. He didn't say, oh, I don't recall seeing that. I don't recall saying those things that, that all the world saw you say. No, no. He, he owned it. He was, he was criticized by everyone because it was clear that he had misled the public. And he expressed regret about that speech and he called it a blot on his record he may have paid the price but not among people who saw that hey colin powell not perfect is a human he's one of us and i think added, not took away from his credibility. That was in 2003. Because what did he do subsequently? He stopped playing politics. He stopped taking the information he was fed as a Republican. He left the Republican Party in 2021. He tried to be somewhat more independent before You'll recall that when it came down to who he would vote for president in 2008, he, he endorsed Obama. There's also uh, some reports that, you know, well, he, it's clear some people wanted him to run for president in 95, 96, And this is before the 2003 thing. Maybe he should have run. What would, it, what would it have been like if Colin Powell, he was just a guy who maybe it was the military, maybe it was man in uniform. Maybe it was just knowing that he could cross so many different bridges 
to bring our country together. Man in uniform, person of color, straight shooter. This is 95, 96. They were thinking about, hey, you should run Colin Powell. He didn't. Instead, he took a different role, which led to serving other administrations, the Bush administration, in the capacity of Secretary of State, and that's where he made the faux pas. But how different it could have been, you know, for this son of immigrants, humble guy, not, not a West Pointer, an ROTC guy, who then went on to a much heralded career in the military. And now he led the way for so many upper echelon officers, African-American, and I'm sure some non-African-American military types, BIPOC and otherwise, but I heard some of them talk about him today. Lloyd Austin, the defense secretary, Major General uh, Dana, Dana Petard, who was the ground commander during Iraq. Heard them all talk about him, all talk about that, the Powell Doctrine, which is what he's going to be remembered for. The Powell Doctrine, which was, if you're going to go to war, Essentially, you better be prepared to kick some butt. You know, it's just like overwhelming. You have to have overwhelming force. You have to have clear goals. You have to have the support of the American public. Have this overwhelming force, and you have to have an exit strategy. Powell Doctrine. Get in, get out. Beat the hell out of your opponent, and then leave. Know how to leave. That's how you win. So he'll be known for that in the, in the military ranks. But politically, he'll be known for that one error as Secretary of State about Saddam Hussein. But he will be also known as a guy who owned up to it and tried to go beyond politics. After he made that mistake in 2003, he, he endorsed Obama over McCain. And McCain was one of the good guy Republicans. People now would say, oh, McCain, he was a good guy Republican. Yeah, but he had Sarah Palin. And Powell went, went with Obama. And then later on became a full-fledged independent in 2021 after the January 6th insurrection. But he hung in there throughout and... I know that there are Asian Americans who are Republicans. And if you had to point your finger to, well, the Republican Party is okay. Who would you point to? George Conway? I mean, George Conway, Filipino, married to Kellyanne Conway, somewhat dogmatic. But, now I think most Asian American Republicans would say, yeah, Powell, he's the guy. He's the guy that I'd follow. He's the guy I trust. And I think he was palatable enough for many people who would consider themselves a liberal, perhaps not progressives, but liberal, moderates. He could bring the country together. And you knew that there was an element of trust. So, I don't think I'm being guilty of being overly praiseworthy of Colin Powell. I mean, look, I was around when Nixon died. I was in Washington and man, people just almost forgot about Watergate. It was, Oh, he brought on the EPA. He was a great man. Uh, uh, yeah. Powell's different, but what if Powell had been president? He, what if he were the first black president? That would have been something. One of the things, he was a soldier. That's what everyone who talks about him now, who, who was close to him, they say he was a soldier. 
through and through. One thing that was mentioned was that he was astonished that the Buffalo soldiers weren't honored. And and this is where Filipino American history, Asian American history sort of crosses with African American American history. The Buffalo Soldiers, you know them. They're the, the black infantry groups, cavalry groups that fought the Native Americans in the frontier. And then were so good at that, they said, well, you ought to go to the Philippines. And they sent the black soldiers, the Buffalo Soldiers, to the Philippines where they, some of them hated it, some of them, most notably, David Fagan corporal deserted and joined the Filipino guerrillas. Perhaps that's an infamous note, but it is an intersection between African American military history, American history, and Filipino American history. Because David Fagan could have could have been a general in the Filipino guerrilla forces and helped extend that fight well beyond the official end of the war in 1902, well into like 1912, 1913. They were still fighting. But, you know, to Powell's credit, And this is what happens when you're a first. You have some kind of moral obligation to make sure that that wrongs are righted, especially errors of omission. And I saw one colleague of his today say, well, he was really big on the Buffalo Soldiers. He said, you got to recognize those guys. The black soldiers, Colin Powell was a soldier. He was a soldier and a patriot who broke through all, broke through all the, all the barriers, racial, political. He helped the U.S. win the Persian Gulf War. He was involved with Afghanistan and Iraq, win Iraq or didn't win Afghanistan. But he was such an important American. So I I bring up the Buffalo Soldiers because it's what brings us to this special day, October 18th, Filipino American History Month. It's all our own, you know, no more sharing with Hispanic heritage. Sure, I got a Spanish last name. That's nearly four centuries of Spanish colonialism that I have to rinse through my my veins. But this history, Filipino American, it goes back to October 18th, 1587. I mentioned this in all my columns that I put out today on the Aldeus site, the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund, also on inquirer.net, the Filipino site that goes to all the Filipinos in the, in the diaspora. On the Aldeus site, though, I, 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 I tell the story about how last night I, I went to a Filipino store during the day and I saw some great looking bitter melons. And it was just a reminder of the metaphor, how the bitter melon is a reminder of our little known history. But how on the 18th, it's the day the Filipinos beat the pilgrims to America. You know, bitter melon, right? That green gourd, it's furrowed and it, it's bumpy and it just 
you know, it it looks interesting. They say like, well, what does this what does this taste? It's ambalaya, they call it in Tagalog. Bitter melon. Cut it up. There's like seeds in it. Get rid of the seeds. But you cut it up. You cook it. It's got medicinal qualities. It's not a melon. It's not like honeydew, and nor is it the food of the gods. But it's an appropriate name for the story of our lives, our history. Bitter melon. You know, what better food to celebrate Filipino American History Month, right? When you talk about the Filipino American War, which is what those Buffalo soldiers fought in. And yet, you don't hear that taught much in the history books, the Filipino American War. An estimated million Filipino civilians died. You don't hear that. And then once we cross the 15th, the month is all ours because the Hispanics started on September 15th, ends October 15th, and now it's it's just us, just us Filipinos who can say, October, this is our month. Filipino American History Month. And the reason the Filipino American National Historical Society out of Seattle began the whole thing in um, 1991. It wasn't until 2009, though, coincidentally, when we had a president who knew Filipinos. He grew up with them in Hawaii. But 2009, the U.S. Congress, by virtue of the House and Senate resolutions, officially recognized Filipino American History Month. Not heritage. It's more inclusive. The history could be everything. It could be the heritage. It could be the food. It could be everything. But October specifically, because October 18th is a day, the very first Filipinos, the Luzones Indios, traveled in a Spanish galleon headed by Pedro de Unamuno, came ashore on the central coast of California in Morro Bay, near, near San Luis Obispo, where a rock heralds the arrival of those first Filipinos 434 years ago. That's not decades, that's centuries, four centuries and 34 years ago. That's a long dang time, Emil. Yeah, I know. You got to celebrate this. October 18th, 1587. Now, some historians I can saw, like Daniel Phil Gonzalez, who appears on this show sometimes, and Alex Fabros, who I'd like, I, he sometimes comes on this show, an older show I did. And also, both of those guys were in that Asian American documentary, PBS documentary. They came out of uh, the Asian American Studies, Filipino American History Department, so the College of Ethnic Studies at San Francisco State University. That's some bureaucracy. Well, it's a mouthful, but look, they, Daniel Phil Gonzalez, he was there at the beginning, 68. And he was talking to me one day about how he was going to be a lawyer. He has a, a JD. He was going to go pursue a legal career. He first heard about Unamuno's boats in 1972. But so he didn't run with the information, but he figured someone else did. And someone did in 1996. UCLA's Amerasia Journal published this, an analysis by Eloisa Gomez Bora, who's a librarian and a one-time trustee of Fonz. And she makes the case for Unamuno and his boat, the Nuestra Señora de Buena Esperanza, a single-deck, three-masted masted vessel. And Unamuno crosses the Pacific from Macau, heads points east, and finds himself off the California coast in a place they call Puerto San Lucas, October 18th. 
and they find this ground and there's Father Martin Ignacio de Loyola cross in hand they, they tell Loyola take some soldiers and in front of you put two Filipinos give them swords and shields Filipinos being fodder comes with privilege they were first as Filipinos on day one, the exped expedition climbs two hills. They see no settlements, nor people, and they take possession of the land. For themselves, no, they were not selfish. They were deckhands with swords. They take the land for some guy in Europe, the king of Spain. Okay, king, we're out here doing the dirty work. You're on your throne. He got the land. Did he deserve it? Now he's king. Day two, unremarkable. Day three, October 20th. See, in day two, they didn't even like, let's hoist up a, a cold one. No, they, they didn't do that. Day three, the expedition encountered violence. The logs reveal the natives who they found on the shore probably the Chumash Indians tried to kidnap the ship's barber of course there are Filipino barbers everywhere at which point I'm not kidding it was a barber at which point a violent exchange ensued I'll put on my new Center 4 voice. One soldier was killed, but so was one unnamed Filipino by a javelin. His blood was spilled in the New World. Now that was eventful. Filipino blood spilled in the New World. Unamuno didn't stay long. He left by daybreak on October 21st for Acapulco little R and R I guess Bora the scholar librarian said the unique evidence of a Filipino presence is too obscured or too often obscured when historians fail to identify or differentiate among non-Europeans in the crew like who cares about the non-Europeans well they were the deckhands the Filipinos didn't write the history, but they were undeniably part of the logs, part of the story. They were present. They were on the ship. But was it Moro Bay? Now, I talked to Alex Fabros, and he said, look, I'm a, he's a sailor. And he said he duplicated the effort and used the sex, sextant numbers from the log. And it probably wasn't Moro Bay, but maybe someplace north still in california not quite daily city i know a lot of you are hoping huh? daily city please daily city no not daily city but it was possibly half moon bay so the point though the broader point is the criticism does not negate the logs of unamuno that were discovered and until there's an earlier date the Filipinos are a documented part of this new world landing in 1587. They were first. Now, of course, the Shumash were, were here, right? I mean, that's sort of the reality for everyone who was part of that whole explorer discovery, let's find the new world thing, right? Uh, there were people already here, the indigenous. But playing by the colonial rules among Asians, it was the Filipinos who appeared to be the first on American soil, at least on what is now known as California. So how do we use this information? Well, just remember, later next month, you know, November, Thanksgiving, you're with your relatives and 
someone's making a big deal about the pilgrims, or maybe you are some white people. Maybe some of your relatives are white, or maybe you're white. Perfect setup. You're watching the the football games, and you're you're, you're saying, hey, let you're making a big deal about the pilgrims, right? And you're eating turkey, and they had the Indians there. Plymouth Rock, 1620, December 1620. And you say, hey, you know who were, who were first? Who came first? They'll say, oh, the pilgrims. Don't you know the meal? Hey, no, it wasn't the pilgrims. Was it the pilgrims? No, it wasn't the pilgrims. It was just the Filipinos. They touched base on the other side of the American continent 33 years earlier in what looks to be Morro Bay, California. So you say, who's on first? The Filipinos. They were pilgrims, my friend. Pinoy's. That's the little-known history that FONS, the Filipino-American National Historical Society, continues to celebrate, and it is the basis for the entire month to be known as Filipino-American History Month. Filipinos, first on North American soil, 1587, October 18th. It's documented, it counts, it's our history. And still, funny how no one really knows it. That's our bitter melon. So it's happy day, somber kind of day too, October 18th. Made even more somber yet, we find the news that General Colin Powell has passed on serious what's the message he died from complications of COVID-19 because he's he had myeloma which is a cancer infection throughout the body probably infected by someone who was non-vaccinated I just think that the message for for all of us is Get vaccinated. Get that. 84 is young. Colin Powell was doing good work with youth, doing good work at work with young people at City College of New York because he knew he broke through so many barriers, racial and political. A humble guy, a humble man who he didn't brag about it, but he talked about getting C's and D's in college, but excelling in his passion, ROTC. And with that, he went into the military. Now, a lot of people look at the military as a dead end. I know Filipinos in San Diego, Filipinos in the Navy, Asian Americans who consider the military, they don't consider it a dead end. I mean, if, if it's their passion, I know some ROTC guys from Lowell High, it was their passion. But you know, it's still hard because there's some people who will label us and put us down and to get by that whole thing that we struggle against, man, Powell, was an example, a model for all of us. BIPOCs, black, indigenous people of color, we can get through, we can, we can endure, we can succeed, we can go beyond race, go beyond politics. That's, that's what makes this day, when I'm here to talk about October 18, 1587, well, October 18, 2021, a sad time too, because the man who broke through 
just like those explorers, just like those Filipinos who came across new land, stepped foot here. Colin Powell, the general, has died. And we won't know if it could have been prevent preventable. He got COVID. He didn't have to. Who was unvaccinated? Who was around him who was unvaccinated? But it should be a reminder to all of us to spread that message. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. I, I know a handful of military folks. I have military people in my family. And some married to cousins, daughters. I admire them. Some people think it's a trap. Oh, military, it's a trap. You can't make any money. You can't have, what kind of life is that? Oh, you got to move around. You live a life of service. There's a reason why you do all the things you do in the military. I, I'm not a big fan necessarily for me. But using General Powell as an example, you can see how a military life, you can do great things. You can break barriers. You can do anything you want. And for many of us in the BIPOC community, it is still a pathway a pathway to a life worth living so our condolences to all the friends and relatives and family of general powell like i said i, I never met the man um but you know i know asian americans who certainly knew him, worked with him, who were also, or are, great men. And I'd have to mention the former secretary and congressman Norman Y. Mineta worked in the same cabinet as, as Powell, as one of those persons of color who went beyond, smashed through barriers, smashed through barriers of race and politics. You know, we need people like that. We don't, we don't have people like that. We have partisans, we have divides, we have people who, I mean, for to, I, I saw a tape today of Powell defending his move to, to endorse Obama for president when he was a pretty much what you'd think was a dyed in the wool Republican, Powell. But no, he was just a dyed in the wool patriot, an American who wanted the best for this country. So, uh, a sad day. We need more people like Colin Powell. But he's a reminder that people like that can exist and thrive and do exist and aren't trying to divide and tear up this nation, but really trying to bring it together. Oh, well. He died, Powell, on October 18th. Important day in Filipino-American history. I won't forget him. And that's our show for today. Uh, thanks for, for listening or watching, you know, the, the way to, to enjoy this show is just to like go to emilgalermo.media or amok.com and just sort of click on all those things where I'm 
looks like I'm talking. Well, you got to press it first. And then I, I talk, you go to YouTube or in. Oh yeah. We're on Twitter at Emil Amuck at Emil Amuck on Twitter. You follow us on Twitter. Go see the replays on amok.com. This is show 160, right? What does an Asian American think? Well, they just come here. I'll tell you what an Asian American thinks about Colin Powell. What a guy. What a guy. And uh, show 160, of course, is the show where we uh, also talk about the day the Filipinos beat the Pilgrims. So share this show. Share the link with this show. Share with your friends. I'm Emil Guillermo. This is the Micro Talk Show. The AAPI and the AAXs are naming convention for Asian American ethnicity X, Filipino, Chinese, AAC, AAF, or the ALLs, the alls. All's the rest of you. Right here. So, uh, Thank you, really, thank you for, for joining us. And you know, the real Anyap is the end here, where I just look in the eye and I say, look, are you feeling bad? Are you feeling down? Don't feel bad. Give yourself a uh, hug. Tell yourself, it's all right. We could be like Powell. We can belong. Just remember these words. May we be safe. May we be happy. May we be healthy. And may we live with ease. Emil Guillermo here. Till next time. Mahal. Kitan.